We're going to talk about my favorite types of investment financing, folks. This show's all about financing. So if you're out there trying to invest in real estate, trying to get those cash flow properties, and you got financing questions, pay attention. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. Today, we're working with my man, Jake. Jake from Colorado moved to the Cleveland market. We're going to be looking at some properties. And Jake, we're going to be talking about financing at length today, right? Because financing is one of the biggest keys to your real estate investment portfolio. So I'm going to go over a deal that I think is going to be great for you. And I'm going to talk about the financing at length. Some financing's great. Some not so much. Bad financing could turn a good deal wrong. You know, good deal wrong. Is that a good phrase? Bad financing can make a good deal a stinker. Great financing can make a stinker a good deal. What if I give you a good deal with great financing? Because that's what I'm doing. Let's go. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. Let's jump into the numbers, right? This is what you're here for. You're here to make sure the deals are good. Now, this is a triplex. Triplexes are my second favorite type of investment, okay? My absolute favorite investment is the four-unit apartment building, okay? Favorite investment is a four-unit. Second favorite investment is a three-unit, okay? Do you know what my least favorite apartment building is? Least favorite investment of all kind? It is a five-unit, folks. I hate five units. I hate them! I hate five units! But I love four and I love three. I love duplexes, too. Here's the deal. I like duplexes. You know what I like more than duplexes? Triplexes. You know what I like more than triplexes? Quads. You know what I hate? Five units. You might be like, well, okay, I don't understand. I get why three is better than two. I get why four is better than three. Why is five not better than four? Jay Wise, what are you doing? You're exploding my brain. Folks, real estate, real estate investing, it's about financing, okay? You can invest in a lot of stuff, right? That's what we're here for. We're not here... Because, like, we love real estate from, like, an architecture standpoint. I'm not loving this investment property because I love, like, the architect. I don't want to go, like, hug the porch, right? I'm here. I love it because it's a monetary investment. It's an investment vehicle, okay? If I thought I could make more money doing something else, fuck this property. I'd be doing that, okay? But I don't think you can make more money doing something else. I think real estate's the, the supreme type of investment why financing man people are buying bitcoin some people claim they make money i don't even understand it at all honestly but that notwithstanding the moral of the story is you can't get a loan to buy bitcoin you can't get a loan to buy and sell nfts you can't get a 30-year loan to open up a bar to open up a tattoo shop to open up a I, an Etsy shop, dude. I don't. Maybe you and your wife are fucking making dream catchers, and you're selling them sons of bitches on the Etsy. That's great, man. But you can't get a thirty year loan to make the biggest motherfucking a, a dream catcher Etsy shop in the world. Okay, you can't. But with real estate, you can. Okay, you can get financing. And I said thirty year financing in there, and that's very important. Here's the deal. Residential financing is different than commercial financing. Residential financing is the kind of financing you want. Residential financing only applies to single-family homes, duplexes, triplexes, and quads. Okay, Those are the only four types of properties you can get residential financing. Residential financing is the best. 
30-year loans, fixed interest. You're only going to need about 25% down, the best terms possible, okay? Only downside is it works for only those four types of properties. And I guess another downside is you're only going to get 10 of those, folks. Take care of home base first. Get your residential uh, financing. Your first loan should be your personal home. After that, look towards nine investment properties, okay? Once you jump up to five units, you no longer get that sweet 30-year financing. Now you got to move into commercial terms, which are garbage compared to that, number one. Number two, lenders don't like five units. That is literally the smallest building you can put in their commercial portfolio, right? So with a four-unit and a three-unit, you got the biggest, most possible rent with the best financing, right? So that's why whenever you get an opportunity to buy triplexes and quads, you should. Now we're in the Cleveland market. We got a whole lot of inventory of duplexes, but you know what we don't have a lot of? Triplexes and quads. So we probably don't have enough quad inventory for you guys to say, well, hey, screw it. Four is better than three. Fuck this triplex. I'm only going to buy quads. Yeah, that's great. Not enough quads to go around, okay? People are like, I mean, anybody that just listened to me explain that, there, there ain't nobody out there. Well, I mean, I guess there's probably some people. But most people are like, He's on to something here. That makes a lot of... Ruth! Ruth, come look at the YouTuber! The fat-bearded guy's making some sense, right? Most people get it. So a lot of people want to buy those quads. We don't have enough of that inventory out here in this market. We got a ton of duplexes, not a lot of triplexes, not a lot of quads, right? So if you ever get the opportunity to jump on a three- and four-unit building, you got to do it, folks. And this one, it's a very nice three-unit building. Current rents... Are under market, 700, 700, 475. Market rents, let's throw up the chart, 775, 775, 575, 2,125, right? That's 25,500 for the year. Now, what the seller is asking, 139.9. By the way, the address is 4014 Cypress Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. It's the old Brooklyn neighborhood. We got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties just like this. Well, that's a lie, actually. Because most of them are duplexes, so I guess they're not really just like this. Well, they are and they aren't. You see, here's another thing. This, there's actually thousands of buildings just like this, okay? Uh, what this is normally is an up-down duplex. They all have these big, huge attics, okay? This person, many, many years ago, probably 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, something like that, converted it into a triplex, okay? Okay. Now, some of you guys might be like, wait, there's not that many triplexes, but there's a bunch of duplexes. I could put a three-unit, I could, I could turn the attic into an apartment building. That's probably what some of y'all are thinking. You got them wheels moving, right? I get it. Slow your roll. Uh, here's this situation. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of duplexes. They all have these unfinished attics uh, in the market. When you get the opportunity to buy one that's already been converted and finished into a three-unit, you absolutely should. That's what this is. You should not try to buy a duplex and do it yourself. Building codes have changed, folks. The building codes today in 2022 are not the same as they were in 1980, 1970, 1960. Today's day and age, to meet new building code standards, it would be cost prohibitive. You need two forms of eager, a whole bunch of stuff, okay? If you could find one that's already grandfathered in like this one, you're going to get a big bang for your buck. The bang for your buck is not there to convert it yourself adhering to 2022 building standards, right? You got to jump into that grandfathered loophole. So when I say we have hundreds of properties like this, I mean we have hundreds of duplexes that theoretically could be converted to triplexes like this, but it doesn't make sense in 2022. But if you find one that's already done, been did back in the day and you're grandfathered in like this bad boy, that's where you want to be. With that said, 139.9, one day on the market, we got to come. Correct. Don't be trying to kick off a lowball offer. You ain't getting the fucking deal. 140. Come in at 140. No questions asked, man. Well, I mean, we're still going to make a contingent inspection, but don't try to be like 136, 135. At 140, you might not get it. It's probably going to be a bidding war. You might want to consider increasing that. Go up uh, two, three, four, five grand to get the seller to take your offer because there ain't no scenario where there's going to be just one offer on this thing. So I say at least 140 is what you should offer. If you factor in market rents for this, after fixed and variable expense estimates, I expect you to make every year to clear about 12 and a half. At the 140, this is why that financing is so awesome. All you got to do is put 35K into the building. Bank kicks in 105 over 30 years. That will project you out to a long-term investment of 20%, assuming we slowly raise those tenants' rents up to market. That's why these things are banging. The financing's amazing. This is a solid deal. We should definitely go for it. 
once we actually put in our contract, we're, of course, going to make a contingent on inspection. They're occupied units, so we don't even have pictures of the interior. We're going to have the inspector go through there. And just to give you an idea of how this should play out, do not anticipate everything to be spanking, brand spanking new. Not going to happen. Furnaces, hot water takes. Expect them to be mid to end of life, right? You're not buying turnkey. You're buying from mom and pops. So if a roof has got an expected life, a life expectancy of 30 years and it's 24 years old, Ain't nobody going to replace it just to sell the property. It's got another six years, folks. You just got to know the cost of these things. That's why I factored in uh, capital expenditures into your budget, right? A roof on a deal like this, it's about a $7,000 roof. Roofs last 30 years. Just got to see how long it's got left. Furnaces, there should be three. They cost about three Gs a piece. They last 30 years. Hot water tanks, there should be three. They cost about $1,000 a piece. They last about 15 years, okay? None of that stuff should be new. It should all be anticipated to be mid to end of life because nobody's replacing it until it's totally broken, right? If you got a furnace and it's 33 years old and it still works, you're not just going to be like, ah! I throw three grand at my furnace, it works. No, you're just going to ride it out till it dies. I mean, that's, that's how it is, right? So uh, expect mid to end of life mechanicals. Expect the units to look, you know, worn. Like after these tenants eventually move out, of course, we'll have to repaint and stuff of that nature. But the numbers are there. Triplexes are rare. The financing's beautiful. Financing at uh, all-time lows right now. So it's definitely a go. Like I said, 140 at the least. That should be the least amount you're considering. You'll probably want to consider going up to get a better shot of securing this because this should be a bidding war. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.